one thing that most of you don't know is that I'm a visual artist and I've done very many paintings for different dignitaries, including the Porters, that's the president of the United States, former president, that is Barack Obama. I've done a painting for uh, His Excellency Jakaya Kikwete. I've done two paintings for His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta. I've also done a painting for His Excellency William Ruto, the deputy president of Kenya. I've also done a painting for the president of Ethiopia. That's Her Excellency Sahle Zodi. I've also done very many paintings to different businessmen uh, in Kenya, including uh, Dr. Manu Chandaria. I've also done a painting for Dr. James Mwangi, the CEO of Equity Bank. And many, many, many ministries. I've also done paintings for the judiciary. I've done a painting for Equity Bank. I've done a painting for Safaricom. Well, let me not brag. Let's get back to business. art as usual this particular video is a bit different um i just decided to let some of you know that i am a visual artist by profession and uh, i started that so apart from the videos that you watch around basically i specialize in visual art i deal with paintings i will not go so much into detail but then this video was just to give you a glimpse on one of the remarkable paintings that I've done and I'm super, super proud of. I'm very excited that I was commissioned to do a painting for the most powerful man in Kenya. And that is none other than the president, His Excellency Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. So this video technically is just a glimpse of what goes behind the scenes. I, can, I kind of took time to just capture some glimpses and shots of some of the particular stages when I'm painting, starting from sketching, immediately after sketching, uh, doing the backgrounds, working on the first coat, second coat, etc, detailing, etc, all the way to the end. So the initial stages of starting a painting is by sketching. One rule of being an artist is that you must know how to do, whether you're a painter, sculptor, architect, etc. So now, for this particular painting, I'm starting by sketching. Uh, I'll explain the meaning of the painting later once I finish, but uh, this is a very, very crucial point. It's like building a building. It's the foundation of the painting. It's the blueprint of the painting. Well, I need some monster energy. <laughs> So 
I'm going to be using acrylic paints as opposed to oil paints. Reason being, acrylic paints usually dry faster. Uh, in, the, in less than 10 minutes actually, after painting a layer, the layer will be dry. But then if I had to use oil paints, it takes months, even weeks to dry. So I've started doing the background. I'm uh, trying to catch up some uh, sun rays and uh, the Nairobi skyline right there, you can see it. So I usually start from back to front left to right and if you're left-handed you start from right to left that's for realism painters for those people who do abstract is a different story That's the first coat I've just finished and uh, you can see the background is almost done. My, my main goal is first of all to clear all the white areas. Then later on I'm going to start uh, another second layer that is coming with finer details. The more details I put, the more layers I put, the better the painting. So when you look at it, it may not be super super good because some of the finer details will come much much later. For now, uh, just finishing up the background. So now, it actually depends with the composition. There are those particular compositions whereby you kind of finish the finer details almost on the second layer. But now, for me, when I'm painting the back, uh, the landscapes, I usually choose to go layer by layer. Let's say the fourth layer is when I do the finer details. It actually depends with the composition. If it's portrait, a different story. Also, different artists have their own style, so, well. So this is the third layer I'm working on. I'm uh, just trying to capture a few details, especially on the rocks, the boulders, which are right on the foreground. On the background, uh, the backgrounds, I never want to put lots of details because it's far away. Things which are far away, you're not supposed to see them in fuller details. So technically, it's kind of a theory of perspective, you know. Uh, the further you go, the, the smaller things are, the less uh, detail they are the less color they must have but then this one was a bit challenging because I had to work with the sunrise which is bright so technically I'm trying to beat around perspective at the same time be realistic so you can see actually the sun is right behind right behind the Nairobi skyline so I'm sure you're wondering how come I've framed the painting and I've not finished it you see that's the reason why I was fighting to clear all the white areas it's because of time trust me I only had five days to do this painting five good days and I'm not talking about full time because I have some other job that I do so technically I was only depending on the free times that I have so now uh, that was challenging so I had to call the guy who frames for me told him to be as careful as possible did the framing but then I ensured that by the time I take it there was only a small section of the white area so that means I only had the center part to deal with all the edges were already covered so technically there was no harm in framing so now rule number one of being a visual artist you must have some smart tricks you must have some smart shortcuts that are not going to jeopardize the quality of your work that was just one of them so this is the fourth layer technically i'm dealing with the finer details of the painting you could see the hair of the girl trust me it's one area i really love about this painting well i love the entire painting but then this is one area that really touches my soul <sighs> Trust me, I'm enjoying this. And then we have the skyline. You have the KICC right there. You can see the time star. Well, you know the iconic buildings. Then there's the prism uh, building in Upper Hill. Technically, I was just trying to capture the essence of Nairobi. Anyone who, who has been to Nairobi, who has been there, if you see this, you will know definitely this is the Nairobi city. Well, it's kind of infused into a fictional kind of a... Uh, thought of an artist so you don't ask me why upper hill is so near the KICC please that story for another day geography much later on
So in art, it's called the rule of superimposition and juxtaposition in the sense that in art, we live in a world of possibilities. We live in a mindset that is fictional, full of ideas, whereby juxtaposition is whereby things are next to each other, then superimposition, things are, you know, on top of each other. Technically, the ideas on this painting, similarly. You may find a scenario whereby an artist has painted Eiffel Tower next to Burj Khalifa. Well, in reality, they're in different countries. Same thing is happening here. The prison building, which is right, right at Upper Hill, is next, almost next to KICC, which is the, the CBD. So now, one thing you have to know is that this is fictional, but then at the same time, capturing glimpses and pieces of the realistic fabric. So now, this particular painting is not full-blown realistic, it's neither abstract, it's somewhere in between. Let me say, it falls under surrealism. Oh guys, uh, let me spare you the lecture, I'll actually spoil the mood. I'll keep the lecture to my diploma students who take art and design. Rolled. Guys, the painting is over. Okay, don't mind my <laughs> apathetic voice. Let me stick to painting. So, guys, actually, this is the finished product. And right, right here, I'm going to explain to you the meaning of the painting. So, class, pay attention. Matthew, stop chatting. Sylvia, stop sleeping. Pay attention. Just kidding guys. Okay, so this is the meaning of the painting. So basically when I got the commission, they wanted something to show the legacy. Number one, I decided to choose the keys to show the new generation. Definitely we're talking about the legacy left by the president, his excellency, Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. In terms of the infrastructure, you can see that. Then we have the expressway right there, we have the estuary, and then we have the landscape that is showing obstacles that he has come through up to this time the sunrise which is fully bright is showcasing the new dawn that means things are going to remain the same even better and brighter one thing you have to realize is that that's just a summary of it technically actually i was trying to showcase the different milestones that the president has overcome to kind of get kenya where it is we may have the naysayers, we may have the yesayers, but then technically there is something that he has done. So now this particular painting, that was the essence of it. And one thing you have to realize is that the kids are smiling, they are healthy, the boy and the child. So the young boy and the smiling girl are a symbol of hope in Kenya, not only for the new generation, but actually a symbol of the future. Because you see, anytime you want to portray the future, you kind of have those kind of smiles from young little kids. Anyway, I just decided to do that instead of putting grown men and women who are <laughs> full of makeup and stuff like that. Anyway, coming back to the painting, another thing that I forgot to mention is that uh, the Nairobi skyline does not necessarily mean that the changes are only within Nairobi County. It's just, a, it's just a way in which it kind of showcases Kenya because technically Nairobi is the capital. So that does not mean that other counties have been left out. So yo, don't come on me on the comments. The SGR, the expressway, the buildings on the skyline are a symbol of infrastructure, just to mention but a few. And also you have to realize that just right below the SGR, we have a very tiny path that is trying to traverse through this government. So one thing you have to know is that the president has come from far. Well, uh, he actually has done some work and at some point he may be criticized for ABCD. But well, these are just some of the other obstacles that he has faced. So I was also capturing the same. There's so many, 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 many things about the painting that I probably explain on the comment section, okay? So for now, um, I delivered the painting, so yay. One thing is for sure, the painting was loved. Oh, I'm even getting emotional about it. The painting was really loved by the president, the ministry loved it, 
everyone loved it and trust me i got some very nice deals got some connections let me see <laughs> thank you mama my mama is watching over me we have soul rest in peace anyway guys thanks for watching and finally a big thank you to his excellency the president uh, and also the ministry that commissioned me to do this magnificent painting thank you and be blessed so guys thank you so much for watching uh for this video in particular i was only focusing on that painting but then uh on the upcoming videos i'll try my best to give you more glimpses and pieces of what i've done before so i know on the intro i mentioned so many people that have done paintings for and i'm sure you're curious now can we see the paintings i have a, a whole length of portfolio trust me if i start showcasing it right now i'm not finished because in my lifetime i think i've painted more than 500 paintings and um I have images for all those uh, that I mentioned. It's just that uh, today I was focusing mostly on this. So I've studied art and design uh, way back since high school. I uh, went to a very, very awesome school, I must say. I'm very proud of it. I'm from Mary Hill Girls High School. So I finished studying that. And uh, in high school, basically, art and design was an optional subject. It was on a cluster whereby you had to select Let's say, for example, you can select between agriculture, art and design, home science. My mother actually told me you have to really pursue it. So that's the reason why specifically I went to this school, because it was known to have a very nice uh, department in art and design. So I did art and design uh, back in high school. Immediately I finished, I knew what I wanted. Let me say, it's a scenario whereby my mother really propelled me towards the direction I need to be to. She noticed that I was passionate about it. And I'm, I'm proudly glad that uh, my mother was a teacher. So technically, as much as she was doing that as a profession, she used to really, really also apply that uh, in the family. Like, let's say, guiding, teaching you uh, the norms, the values, etc. Of course, that's story for another day. But in short, she's re she really inspires me so much. So I did art and design. So after high school, I went ahead and did art and design for my undergraduate at Kenyatta University. And immediately after that, I did, uh, well, I don't know why I'm revealing so much, but I've done Chinese language and culture. I can comfortably speak Chinese. Uh, that's the Mandarin. And uh, immediately after that, uh, we enrolled for my master's degree. So I'm just finishing up right now. Okay, most of my friends have been telling me that I need to do videos on my paintings. But then the problem is, is that the moment I get the orders, that is uh, for the painting, the commissions, I'm usually on the zone. I just paint. And at, at that time, I don't even think about videos. I don't think about recording. Sometimes I have to put, um, you know, intermittent alarms to just remind me to eat. So that is usually very challenging. But then moving forward, I think I'll try my best to be recording that. So previously, of course, I was not on YouTube. I, YouTube is something I just started as a joke. Of course, I was totally inspired by my friend. Uh, she's called uh, African Tigress. So I cannot say that I had the time to capture all those videos while I'm painting because first of all, I'm usually in the studio alone. Your mind is fixated on finishing that. You're getting phone calls. How, how far is the work? Can you send us the, the progress? Can we see? So it's usually challenging to record at the same time, do the editing at the same time. Trust me. I would like to do it but sometimes it's very 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 tricky so but then now that i'm into youtube and um i must say it's one of the hobbies that i've really taken seriously right now i will try my best to record that so another thing is that uh this painting that i was commissioned to do it was actually one of the major major commissions i've had uh in terms of let's say for example well the financial aspect but also in terms of who is getting the painting, of course, it's the president, what do you expect? So I was commissioned by one of the ministries in uh, in Kenya. Uh, I wouldn't want to mention it because I signed an NDA of uh, disclosure, blah, 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 blah. You know, all those legal stuff. So technically, they commissioned me to do this painting. And uh, the main, main reason why they wanted to give to, uh, the president this was something symbolic, something iconic that was capturing his legacy. So you will notice that within the painting that I've done for the president, uh, it will be having symbolic stuff that kind of appeared towards the direction of his legacy now that we are just almost having our elections. 
and uh, at the same time looking back into how actually looking back into how has the president really tried his best in improving the country uh, in terms of leadership in many aspects infrastructure development it is i know so many people debate about this but mine i was just coming in as an artist to paint okay so um i hope you've enjoyed the video so at the end you've seen uh, the president receiving the painting trust me it's something that i'm very very proud of unfortunately i was not there to <laughs> during the time it was being issued because uh there is something you sign with your clients like let's say for example if i have been commissioned to do the work there's no purpose of me being there to give it to the president otherwise it will lose its meaning as a gift because mine was to do the work i get paid and that's it but then there are some occasions in which i've actually uh been there let me say this is the second time i'm doing the painting for the president the first time i did it was way back in 2015 he was actually opening up, uh, he was launching the administration block for the university. And I was privileged to be among the people who uh, were there to, to give out the painting. But not only that, but being trusted with a big, big institution such as a, a Kenyatta University to do the painting for the president was something major. So thank you so much and uh, feel free to share your views about the video and suggestions on the comment section uh, subscribe share like just support a girl here because i'm really really enjoying this hobby apart from painting and my other work that i do trust me um i really 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 love youtube <laughs> Oh, yeah, go, I said, yeah, 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 yeah